Mercedes AMG Interview Lounge. Okay, Leslie Odom Jr. is here. Tell me that you guys just rehearsed it in the car on the way over. You, you've never done it before. Essentially. Oh, we, 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 st- we rehearsed it uh, yesterday for the first time. We rehearsed it like two times. And um, I've got a good friend, Aston Turrentine in L.A., who helped us, you know, make sure that the harmonies were on point. And yeah. <laughs> It sounded like it. You see, to you, this is, oh, well, we'll just throw this together. <laughs> and to us, it's, it's, it was a masterpiece. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you work with the right people, that's what I'm learning. If you surround yourself with brilliant people, it, it like you guys have what's going on here. You oh, know there's I mean? no you surround yourself there's no, there's no brilliant in here. <laughs> with talented, genius people, and you get talented, you know, you get genius product. That's what we're doing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what's wrong here. Yep. Well, okay, so we have lots to cover here. Okay. Uh, I wanna, your story is fantastic. I met you several years ago at uh, LC Fest. Of course. And uh, that was back in that was back in the Hamilton days, I guess. Yeah, Darren Chris, Darren Chris has that festival of sort of broader performers, yeah. Every year. But uh, but to have you here today, it's just for, on many different levels, it's just, it's fascinating. Mm. Uh, let's start, of course, with the album that comes out tomorrow. It's weird, it's gotta be weird when you put an album out and you know as of tomorrow, and nothing you can do, it's done. It's out there and you can't change anything. Does that yeah. make you a little nervous, a little bit? Oh no, at this point I'm so excited. I mean, it's been, I've been working on it for like three and a half years. Not straight three and a half years, you know, I've been, I've taken breaks, <laughs> but I've been working, so much of the time has been creation and then it's been, I've, I've spent a fair amount of time now um, building, trying to build anticipation for it. So I'm just ready to be on the other side of that. I'm ready for people to have it and, and, and say what they will, you know what I mean? But I'm proud of it. I'm just ready to like, just have it out. <laughs> I gotta say, Leslie, you know, coming from uh, a fan's point of view, our point of view, yeah. to see someone excel on Broadway in a, arguably one of the biggest shows of all time in, in our world it is anyway. And then there's a shift to doing a film and then there's, there, and there's putting music out. We think of that as, oh, what a talented guy. He, yeah. they, the three things, if you think about it, really don't have a lot in common. They are three totally different, different businesses. For the, sure. Three different projects. Completely. Even in music, you know, when I'm learning, I'm learning so much, um, but making a great album is not, has nothing to do with making a great video. Right. Has nothing to do with a great live performance. There are some people, I I know singers, I won't mention any, but I know singers who I'm like, you have to see them live. The recorded product does them no justice. Right. You know, but no, there there are all these different facets of our business that it takes a lifetime to master them all. When you see somebody, um, you know, that does them all well and seemingly effortlessly, uh, you know, I'm always amazed by that. All right, Mr. Tony, Mr. Grammy. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry. Did I just drop that like that? A Tony and a Grammy. So you're a, you're a good. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Uh, At the last interview that I did, uh, the the guy said, so, you know, maybe, you know, you're, you're so talented. Maybe you'll peacock one of these days. I was like, peacock. What's that? That's what he thought he got was. (laughs) He said maybe oh you'll God. peacock. I, I think I would love to peacock one day. <laughs> I'll call you when I peacock. Uh, you know, we, we went, Gandhi and I stayed up late last night. We went to Brooklyn and we saw Anthony Ramos. Me too. I was there. You were there last yes. Night? Okay. We all missed each other. Okay, so, Yo. okay, so we got we got our, he was he was in this chair on this chair two weeks ago, and we we talked about him, and we and you know his story and your story. You, they remind me of each other a little bit. Yeah. You're both so grateful for the people along the way who were there for you. I have chills thinking about it. Like seeing him. He cried, by the way, two weeks ago. If, if we can make Leslie Odom Jr. cry. Yes, uh, let's do it. I'm going to get like an EGOT. Or, <laughs> yeah, a peacock. A peacock. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, what were you going to say? No, just seeing him stand in the fullness of who he is. You know, he's always been so extraordinary. I knew it from the first, you know, two minutes of meeting him. But, you know, seeing him last night. You know, in his ministry, in like, in, in his purpose, was like was was um, just one of the great moments of my life. And that record, yeah, that album is. He made a classic album. He made a classic pop album. I think. I think that album is going to sound good when we're old. When you know, in fifty years, it's just. Honey, I'm there. I'm old. <laughs> I think it sounds good. I'm older. Yeah. It sounds good. But yeah. you know what he did last night, and you know what? Maybe other performers in live performances should think about doing this. Sometimes when you're in a concert hall, whatever, you can't hear all the words, especially if you're old and deaf like me. Right. So what he would come out and do, and I would love to see you do this, Leslie. Okay. He, he would tell a story of why the song was important to him, right. and then he would actually kind of rap some of the lyrics with no music behind him, and then he would perform that song with those lyrics and sing them. And you're like, oh my God, I know what he's saying. It was amazing. It was cool. Okay, back to you. 
Back to you. We can talk about Anthony the whole time if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. He's, does he or David. Like, David's album also came out. I, you know, I don't think it's a mistake that um, I, it, it certainly wasn't planned. You know, me, Anthony, and David all had David with his with his uh, clipping with the group clipping had original albums all released within a month of each other. Wow. I think it's because it ta- it it has taken us. All, we're we're sort of connected, you know, forever in a way because of the Hamilton experience, and that's about how long it took to sober up to dream a new dream for yourself and to build that thing, to create it. It took like three and a half years. God, I just never want to sober up. No, that's the worst (laughs) part about it. If you're wondering exactly what we're talking about, of course, there is this phenomenon called Hamilton. And I remember seeing it with the original cast. And I remember seeing it when there was a buzz on it, but it wasn't where it was going. You could actually get tickets back then. Right. It was the strangest thing. <laughs> right. But I saw you guys all together. And I remember going to the, sitting in this theater and seeing this performance that it, it, I couldn't explain to anyone. Someone said, well, so what was great about it? I'm like, uh, you got to go see it. <laughs> you can't really yeah. describe it. And to see you guys all living out these other dreams is fascinating. Mm. Let's talk about yours. It was at one time, uh, Leslie Odom Jr. is with us, by the way. At one time, your big goal in life was to be on Broadway and rent. Big yes. goal. That was my only goal. I the never, only goal. I why, never. Why, why rent? Why then? Why was that the only thing that you were focusing on at that time? Well, rent was, it was my mm-hmm. Hamilton. You know, I was like a 13 year old kid in Philadelphia. I'd never seen a Broadway show in my life. It, you know, I didn't know anything about Broadway. I wasn't, you know, listening to cast albums or anything like that. But rent made a splash in the way that Hamilton made a splash. You know, this pre social media too. So it reached me in Philadelphia. What they were doing seemed dangerous. It seemed. Seemed like something my parents wouldn't like. You know what I mean? It oh, was let's like, do it. yeah, let's it was like mom and dad. Yeah, it was. It was rock and roll, and it was like, <clears throat> you know, love in the face of in, in the face of anything, friendship in the face of death, art over everything. You know, I mean, they, their message was powerful and intoxicating to me, and so I just wanted to be in that show. I wanted to be a part of that show. I was going to book it when I was thirty. I was going to do it until I was forty, and then I was going to retire like that was it well that was almost 20 years ago oh, Jesus. right that, yeah. it was, it was, it was, i think right around the year 2000s when you you joined rent yeah. so after rent so okay what you just close shop you're done no or do, do for your journey did things just start did doors just start opening up for no, you? no 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 you worked no, you hard go, for it well yeah from from rent i went to college you know i went and studied at carnegie mellon and I, you know because that, that that let me know that i could do this for a living the fact that I booked that show and I was, you know, in high school, I was like, okay, well, maybe I should really pursue this. So I, I should, I, let me learn how to do it. So I went to college and then I was out in LA doing a bunch of television shows that nobody was watching. And then, <laughs> Wait, really, what were you on? Oh my God, I was doing uh, Gilmore Girls, Smash. <laughs> oh, not that's pre Smash. See, that was another show nobody was watching. Yeah. But CSI <laughs> Miami. CSI, um, everyone's watching that. What are you People watch that. Did you, uh, did you play like a, d- a dead guy? I mean, what'd you play yes. on CSI I, Miami? Murder CSI Miami three. was. Uh, no, I always I, wanted to play a dead guy in a film. Uh-huh. I can make it happen. I can call. I know Mariska. <laughs> I don't want to really be dead. Uh, I know Mariska Hargate. I can okay, make it happen. Okay, go ahead. So you were doing you were doing TV shows and you were just. Yeah, I wasn't. You I wasn't, were working. Yeah, I was working, but I wasn't singing or anything like that. And then. Um, that's a it's a long story, but but I, I Smash brought me back to New York, and then um, from that you know I kind of had known known Lynn casually and stuff, and that led to Hamilton and everything. But um, no, it's been just like you know grabbing the next the next best thing. You know the, what's the next right thing that I want to do? What's the next crazy dream I can dream up and latching on to that? And of, of course, of late, uh, I think it just came out this month, Harriet. It just, it just came out. It did, yeah, last yeah. week. Yeah. And uh, with Cynthia Riva, who was just, <laughs> I mean, one of the most talented people ever. And of course, uh, Jonet, um Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet. I'm just calling her Jonet. Just make it one word. <laughs> I mean, th- th- of course, and w- a very, very important story about Harriet, of course. Right. Tubman? Um, no, that was a special experience. I have such deep affection for, for Cynthia and Casey and stuff. I got it, yeah, I got invited by my friend who was in the same way, just like, you know, we. Our shows opened on Broadway the same year. We won, you know, we we had Tony Knight was very, very special for both of us. And um, she she got the role of a lifetime and she wanted she invited me to the party. So I just wanted to show up and support Cynthia in that. And she's extraordinary. in the movie. Look at you. I mean, if you I must assume and I've said this about other people, I'll say it about you, Leslie Odom Jr. If you weren't you, but you were watching this guy's career who's sitting here, you'd be very impressed. You would be very impressed. I with, love when you. I love that you say that because you got to take yourself out of you and look at what you have accomplished and are accomplishing. That's the thing that grounds me and keeps me going. 
I'll tell you what I mean. Like there's every now and again when I'm making something and 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 uh, sweating over it, I'm like, you know, well, who really cares? It's just an album, right? But then I think to myself, if I was 13, if I was 14 years old, 14 year old Leslie Odom Jr. would care what this guy was doing, what this black guy in New York was doing. You know, I'd have my eye on that guy. So I I do it for him. There you go. So you did Broadway. You released an album. You're in a movie. <clears throat> what is the next thing? Is there a next thing? Well, you know, I mean, this record again. This is this is my wildest dream to to sing my own original music. I, you know, I'm, if anybody knows me at all, you know, it's from like Hamilton or Nationwide commercials. You know what I mean? Oh, so, <laughs> the fa- oh, by the way, yeah, it's like <laughs> we have to take a quick break. Hold on, we'll be right back right after this sponsor. Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> all right, we're back with there Leslie Odom Jr. <laughs> Listen, like if, if people know me at all, they know me from that. So I'm primarily known as a singer who interprets other people's music. So well, I'm glad, aren't you glad that like you weren't in really, really in need of money and like tampon brand calls? Yeah. <laughs> Leslie Odom Jr., uh, this is your age of tampon. Tamp brands would love for you to do a nice little song for them. I was so happy when they called because I grew up. I grew up. You know, the jingles were big when I was coming up. You know, the best part of waking up. Bulges in your cup. You know, you know what would like, be great? If, if Nationwide ever makes you mad, you could do the, we are farmers. Right. Bum, 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 bum. And that, that's like a competitor yeah. for Nationwide, that's right? right? I want you to like to do all the insurance companies. Like this Like a guy. good neighbor. Well, anyway, so uh, there's that. But back to the album. Okay. Okay. You're asking him, Gandhi, like, what's next? And he said, well, what's next is tomorrow the album comes right. up. By the way, the album is Mr. It yeah. just seems like you are forever working on the next project. Like, I can't even imagine what it would be like to transition through all of those things. Broadway, for me, I'd be done. I'd tap out. Okay, cool. That's it. That's that's what it was for a while. You know, it was like, um, it was the Hamilton. It took a while to sober up. I was like, how do I, how am I going to quit you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it took a while to, to sober up from that experience and to think, what do I want to do now? People would ask me in that experience. And you don't want to be known as the Hamilton guy for the rest of your life. Or do you? No. Well, I'm happy to, you know, thank God it's, you know, I'm known for something like that and not, you know, some silly sitcom. Like the tampon like commercial. <laughs> right. But um, no, it did. It take it took a second to like, what am I going to focus on next? But now with the record, um, like I said, being known as a singer who interprets other people's music, you know, to, to actually put to sing my own words right. and my own melodies and stuff for the first time feels I couldn't have imagined how it would feel. It's so wonderful, and I just feel completely used. I feel completely, like, in my purpose. And now we have to figure out what the live show is. Are you nervous for all the feedback? Because, you know, social media now, everyone's uh, going to give you their opinion. Are you going to look, or are you just going to say, nope, not looking at this? I'll say this. I'm, I, I did not make this album to, like, play it in my bedroom, you know? So I'm, I, I made it because I want people to like it. I want people to love it. Um, I happen to think if you make something that you truly love, it will find somebody else that loves it the way you do, you know? So there will be some pocket of people that dig it. I hope it's large. I hope it's a large pocket, but I've heard from the people that I care about most. You know, I, I've gotten texts from texts from my friends and family who whose opinion means the most to me and, and they see my growth. They see how far I've come and, you know, I, I'll take that. You know, I made my mom cry when I played her the album. Like, oh, oh, I know. But let's be real. It's your mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking anything away from you. I mean, it's Make like, oh, cry. my son is a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, by the, by the way, if, you know what? Let's be our own judges. We're going to play a cut from Mr. in just a second. Bet. Okay. And, you know, <laughs> Y'all tell me what you think. It's an album only a mom would love. <laughs> No, I'm, you know, look, I'm, you know, I'm kidding. Of course. It's, it's on, the, on the eve of putting this out and just wait, just, you are going to be a little curious to see what total strangers think of about I it. am. No, I, that's what I said. I, I'm yeah. curious. I don't I think totally you have a lot to worry curious. about, to be I'm, honest. Thanks, man. Hey, people are texting in. They're saying they want you to do a Smash reboot. Are you going to bring that back? <laughs> you, were, you were saying Smash wasn't that great. <laughs> they loved it. Isn't it funny what you think is great? I know. Um, you just yucked their yum. <laughs> <laughs> they like Smash. I... I I, I, I don't know. It sounds like a, That's no. Sounds like a no, dog. That's no. Hey, you know, so remember about a year ago, they uh, put on a very special performance of Hamilton in Puerto Rico. Yeah. And Len went down and had to, he said he had to, he had to re-rehearse the whole thing. He couldn't just step in and do it. If they called you today, hey, uh, Leslie, everyone's sick. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone's sick. Can you come in and do Aaron Burr just tonight only? Maybe a matinee. Could could you just walk right back on stage and do it? Or would you have to like spend time in a studio like relearning everything? 
It'd be the worst show of my life. If I, if I went back tonight, it cool. would be the, I don't, I don't remember a thing. <laughs> no. Awesome. That's nice to know. One of the yeah. most important roles I ever saw. The guy has no clue what he did. <laughs> well, no, I was, listen, I was fully present then. then. I, yeah, right, I no right. Idea. That was just then and now it's now. Yeah. <laughs> now, if a nationwide commercial. Would be You'd be better me. as Aaron Burr than <laughs> you don't want to see that. tonight. You don't want to see that. It was always it was always my dream to be on Broadway, other than walking down Broadway, and uh, it's you should do the King. The, yeah. the, oh. King George, go for it. What? It's King George. You should do yeah. King George. No, I, mean, I can't, can't, I'm not going to do anything. I can't remember lines. <laughs> I have no brain cells left. <laughs> I mean, even after Anthony Ar- 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 last night, we were out in front of the of the building smoking pot with listeners and stuff. I, was like, I can't. Remember. I didn't remember how I got home. Allegedly. And how do you guys remember these lines? Especially Hamilton has a lot of words. They don't yeah. smoke pot outside the venue. <laughs> I bet they did. <laughs> anyway, look, uh, Leslie Odom Jr., you, you heard a little a little bit of a, his story, how he got from there to here. And then on the eve of this album, Mr. Coming Out, how important this is. Not only is it is it music he's performing for you, but it's his original music. This is a very personal thing. And yeah. the fact that you were here on the eve of the release is pretty cool. Is this the first time you've heard this song on the radio? It will be. Yeah. I love that. We did that for Anthony, by the way. Oh, the first shit. time he ever heard his song on the radio, he was dancing and... Am I going to cry? I, I think he pooed. He, I think he pooed himself. He did, right Am I going to poop myself? You're gonna poo, you're gonna poo. There's you're a gonna... lot that's about to happen. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a busy day here at the show. I'm going to play the song, and I want to thank you for coming in. Leslie Odom Jr., the album is Mr., and uh, of course, it's out officially tomorrow, so stream it up. Let's do it. This is... Does this go crazy? There you go. Thank you for coming <laughs> in today.